My name's James Hughes. I've been guiding for Schultz Outfitters for nine years, and I'm going to tie a fly here that I've been working on for a little bit. Um, it's built on the same platform of another fly of mine called the Flea and Cray. Uh, it's relatively simple. It was designed to swim in a fashion that's it's very, uh, it's got a very abrupt side to side motion. It's something that you can let it pause and hover and just sit. You know, this the the whole concept was built around fishing in and around wood um, as much as you can. Like that's a lot of our rivers are loaded up with wood, and that is where the fish will sit day in, day out, sunny days, cloudy days, doesn't matter. And I wanted something that could just sit there that look different from everything else we throw at them. It's no secret we fish a lot of minnow patterns. A lot of them do the same thing this one does. But the the main gig with this thing is it's it's different. You know, the one thing I've learned over the years, it's once you can start throwing something new at them, they start eating as if they've never seen you before again. So staying on top of that, staying ahead of it and changing things up has been a really important thing for not just me, but all the other guides over the years. Um, and, and that is how this fly came to be. Uh, the other thing was I wanted to get away. Um, I, I love game changers. I fish them all the time. I got a ton of my box, but every now and then you just, you just want to see a different action or the fish want something different. So rather than having that serpentine swim that we all love so much, this one's going to give just a really true side to side dart. Uh, just like what you could get out of like a, a jerk bait in conventional fishing. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and get it started here. We're going to start with the rear just being a 25 millimeter shank. I'm not too worried. You know, a question I get a lot is like, well, what about a second hook? It's like, there are times when, yes, I want a second hook, but we're using a pretty large front hook and they do tend to eat the head. Um, and this thing's not so terribly long that I'm, I'm worried about a short take. And other thing is we're fishing this on the pause so much, the, the eats tend to be pretty much total commitments. So they're absolute kill shots. I'm gonna lay down a thread base on this whole thing. Real nice one, all right? Next thing I'm gonna do, probably not the most necessary step in the world, but I like doing it, it stiffens up the, the rear of the fly a little more. As I just take a little bit bucktail not a lot all right and I'm gonna take that and I'm going to slim this down get rid of some of the shorter fibers and the only thing this is gonna serve as is just basically somewhat of a foul guard as well as just it just a kind of stiffens up that rudder in the back I don't want it very long this is not going to serve as our true tail this is more of a guard of sorts. Our actual tail will end up being uh, some saddle hackle. So to tie this in, which I've got about just one and a half times the length of this 25 millimeter shank here, um, need not be perfect. To tie this in, I'm going to make a couple of loose wraps first, just enough to sit this thing in place. And then I'm gonna start wrapping away towards the eye of the shank while keeping this pinched on top. Once I'm about halfway down, I'm gonna tighten up down here first, okay? So now I can wrap this back forward, all right? Which will help keep this thing from flaring out. I don't want flare. I just want it to be, there we go relatively trim. Once this thing starts to swim in the water, it's going to slim down anyway, just from that force. But in the meantime, we're going to trim this out. And then I'm going to lay down a layer of brushable super glue here. Next comes sort of the tricky part. <clears throat> Maybe the, the, the trickiest part of the whole fly is we're going to build up the tail that's made up of uh, these saddles, all right? And we're gonna do more than two. I, I, tend to, I tend to build these tails out of four, so that'll be two on either side, all cupped in towards the center of the fly. 
And the reason I do that is I don't want to just put two on there and run the risk of having one break off over the course of the season, and then I'm down to one or maybe even none if something gets ripped or snapped. You, you run four and you reinforce them like we're going to, they tend to last a long time. Uh, also, running uh, four of these instead of two will create an even stiffer rear of the fly, which will help give that rudder that much more push to kick the fly over. So rather than a serpentine uh, slither that maybe just two, fly, two feathers will give you, this will give you more of a, a kick. So I'm going to sort of size this up first. We're tying a little bit bigger of a fly, so I am going to run this just a little bit longer. Um, so I'm going to clip to there. All right, give myself enough to work with. Now the trick with this is going to be getting these things to lay pretty much perfectly up and down along the sides of this. Comes along. Now, anything that doesn't look perfect, that's okay. As long as your form is correct. By the time we're done with this, you're going to have other materials hiding any supposed blemishes. So I'm not too concerned. Match up those feathers, get them nice and equal. So I've got two on the side of the fly that's closest to me. I'm gonna do myself a favor. I'm gonna glue those puppies in now. Next, these next two feathers. Same thing, sizing it up. Pretty equal. Let's see if we can get this one to lay flat for us too. Looking pretty flat. Bingo banga. You'll notice when I made these wraps, I'm being very careful not to make my first wrap a tight one. I'm just making a couple loose ones, applying modest pressure, and building it in to lock it into place, and then I can start adding a little more pressure to cinch that down. And of course, glue is your friend at all times. These things will be locked in real good. All right, next step, since it is a minnow and it never hurts to have it, we're gonna go ahead and put in some flash. I like this flash boom mirage stuff. All right. You can be pretty generous with it. I lay it right down over the top and have it go not quite the total length of the feathers here. Okay. Same thing, a loose wrap, eye it up, pull it. I'm then going to take the excess here and I'm going to fold that over the top just to double that in. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to reinforce this whole thing. I'm going to do that with some of this UV flex and that'll just firm it up, stiffen it up. I'm running it down the stem of the feather and feathering it up. And then I'm even going over the top here just a touch running it over the flash a little bit. So this will prevent following in a pretty major way as well. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this translucy brush and there's a one inch version and we're gonna wrap this thing from the rear all the way to the front. As you're wrapping this material and with any brush don't just randomly send it. 
pull that material back. after each wrap. Okay, so pretty much to the front. Go ahead and tie that off, nice and secure. Cut your excess. Further ensuring it's locked into place. Go ahead and hit that with a brush too. Brush just gets everything trained in the same direction. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a little bit of trimming. And there is a reason. And there's actually going to be a lot of trimming as we go through this fly. But the whole idea for this particular pattern is to have something that's that's pretty well narrow in appearance. Almost like you're looking at the like at a shad from the from the head onwards. Now I'm not trimming this thing flat. I'm just sort of training everything back now we got to make the back so you'll often see the rears of flies capped out like this you know uh, swing and d style drunken disorderly flea and cray um, among many many others uh, but for this one i'm gonna i'm gonna tent those things at a hard angle almost almost a perfect side to side but but tilted upwards it can take a little bit of adjusting to get this right. All right. Feather selection is pretty important on this. You know, the more symmetrical the feather, the easier it's going to be. And try to find them in a pair. So we got one in on my side. Lock this in. I'm going to clean this up with some thread wraps. And then I'll show you what this all looks like before we go to our next step. I'm going to go ahead and whip finish on that. Now we're gonna do a little molding here with the uh, with the flex. So. pretty much done. Next thing we're going to do is attach another 25 millimeter shank, which this is just going to serve as our connection, but I'm going to lay down a thread base to lock this thing up and give us something for the thread to bite into when I actually connect it to the front hook. And we'll toss in the front hook, which in this case is a A-Rex Aberdeen Predator. And we're gonna we're running a big one. We're running a four op. Tie these in smaller versions, absolutely. Get a few inches of 030 lead here. Tie it in. And I'm going to wrap this around the bend of the hook up towards the shank. Okay, so it's in, but we're not secure yet. Come on, baby. So now we're ready to tie the rear onto the front end. She won't go anywhere. And our next step is going to be, we're gonna just use a little bit of uh, this frenzy brush. Color of your choice, you can stick with the white. If you want, I'm gonna go with just a little splash of gold in there. This next thing I'm going to add, I'm going to add a little more flash here. Right, what this ultimately is going to do is just help 
kind of kill this gap as we build the rest of the fly, giving us a more solid look to the body. Right onto the very top of the hook. Tied it in the middle, double it over, trimmed it. The next thing I'm gonna tie in, just to get us ready, is this two inch translucy brush. And we're gonna put a rattle in this fly. Rocking this smaller two bead rattle here. All right, we're gonna lay that right on top. But first, I'm gonna use some gel super glue. Usually these rattles have a thick end and a skinny end. And pay attention to that when you're actually tying them in. Because depending on where you have your material bumped up or however the the shank of the fly is forming out, you'll get a flatter sit. It might you might put thick end towards the front, you might put it towards the rear. It all depends. And then I also do my best to check to make sure that I am truly getting this thing on top of the hook shank. So this next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna wrap that translucy brush forward and it's going to make it look real bushy and bulky which is fine we're going to end up cleaning it up with some trimming as we progress through the fly but for now it's going to look a little funny off nice and clean now just like we did in the back we're gonna end up doing it up here we're gonna have to do some trimming in order to get that profile we want like I said earlier we're looking for a, a relatively thin profile but a tall fly overall more worried about trimming from the front I don't want to nip too much of this back here because that's gonna serve to help cover up some of this an idea you can see it's not a super tight trim but there is a narrowness put in there so next we're going to use mallard flank and I tried to get as symmetrical as I could on my selections so if you look we've got we're gonna end up using three one on each side and one over the top I want this feather to go just past or to the ends of the translucent brush, not too far past because I don't want it to limit how much this can swing free. If it's too far over, it's gonna block it. So I'm gonna stop it to about there, giving me that full swing out on that rear of the fly. Okay. Just making sure this is looking the way I want it to. So far, so good. Made a couple loose wraps. Trying to get this thing positioned just so. A couple more loose wraps. It's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and lock it in. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Sometimes you can do this with one feather. Sometimes you need two. We're going to see what I'm going to need today. I think I can do it with one. I've got a good enough feather. You want this stem of the fly laid along that hook shank pretty much perfectly come here you the tips of that top feather 
about equal, slightly shorter than the tips of the two sides. All right. Once you're sort of locked in there, at some point you just got to go for it. And it might look a little goofy like it's sitting high, but we're going to use Flex Cure to help bend and mold this thing into shape. We're not only going to do it on the top, we're going to do it on both sides as well. But I'm going to start with the top. Get this stuff out of here. Starting down at the bottom, working our way towards the tips. Try to hit it as much as I can. There. So next we're gonna we're almost done, but we're gonna splash this thing up with a little bit of color. Just a few rubber legs, nothing crazy. Choosing to use red here. We'll do about four down each side. Trim off that extra. Okay, in terms of the length of the rubber legs, we're going to trim these up just a little bit. I don't want them super long, but I definitely don't want them too short. So overall, for proportioning sake, the rubber comes to about the very start of the tips of the mallard flank here, and that's for both sides. Okay, go ahead and lock that in a little more. Next thing I'm going to do, we're going to continue splashing this thing up with some color. I've got uh, this cotton candy colored rabbit. All right, I like the two-tone stuff. Anytime you can do that, just adds a little layer of excitement there. I'm going to do this with the leather on, and I'm doing that because I want to build bulk quickly. So the whole idea behind any swim fly is a bulky front end that drives the rest of the fly. Whether that's giving you a serpentine swim or a side to side motion, it's all gonna come down to having something at the front for the water to push against. Final piece is this crustaceous brush. For this one, I'm using the blue crab color. I just thought it'd be neat to have kind of a darker head on this thing with some splashes of blue in there. Don't be shy about getting this secured. Cool. And now we wrap. I'm gonna sort of tease this material back, keep it out of my way as much as I can. over it, wrap in front of it, wrap behind it again, wrap in front of it. Whip finish your fly. Glue it. Like I said in the beginning, what I'm looking for is a relatively flat-sided fly, and right now we've got a large uh, bulky head on there, so obviously we need to trim that down. But then we're also going to trim down the bottom of the fly, which will 
kind of add an element of neatness for us. At the moment, if you look, it's pretty bulky up here. All right, not what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead, rotate, make sure I'm vertically aligned here, and I'm gonna start cutting. Okay, and I'm gonna do this first with just a couple of vertical cuts here. All right, just Real narrow is what I want. Now, I'm not trimming back here as much. I'm going to leave that length there for now. So this head shape, it's nothing new in fly tying. It worked. Having this kind of real trim some down head you'll see people doing it with dubbing and all this other stuff with deer hair even and um you know i choose to do it with the brush the brush is easy the brush adds color quickly the head comes up and then drops off and then goes down the ridge i want to mellow that out just looking for that more torpedoey transition just paying attention to shape when we're considering things. All right. If you look, I'm not rushing in and just killing it with a cut. I'm working from the outside down. Because once it's gone, you can't get it back. Okay. So we're, we're getting there. You can start to see we're getting a shape, right? Coming down like that. It's still a little dramatic for me. I mean, there's a lot of fly here. Almost finished here. Put this back in. Bullet head. Starting towards the bot, uh, the eye of the hook, the lowest point of the head and feathering it back, reminding yourself to maintain that thin profile. Okay, once those things are on there, I'm going to end up putting just a little more flex resin over those eyes, which will keep them on a lot longer throughout the life of the fly. I mean, the, they'd be fine to go fish once these things dry in place, but I'm going to do everything I can to keep them on there long if I bothered to put them on there in the first place. I do this, I just usually start with a chunk of that flex right in the center of the eye. Kind of swirl it out around the edges. And that is just a real simple, single articulation fly. 
tide to kick, hard side to side, fish high in the column, over wood. Thanks. <laughs>